hi, it's Naomi. And I am going to start delving into my favorite book to read before doing the Edith Piaf, Piaf Love Conquers All show. And I thought that while I was reading it, I should be recording it so that you can read it too. This is um, a little autobiography that was dictated to a journalist, um, Jean Noli, in the last year of Edith Piaf's life. The first edition, of course, was called Ma Vie, which I do have, but I will read it in French for you. And, uh, and then it was um, edited, translated, and then edited by Margaret Crossland, and she's a famous biographer, and she's written a few biographies on Piaf. And um, I just love the chapter headings on, on this. So in the first um, page there, there's a little picture of um, Piaf and Paul Maurice. Uh, they're in Le Bel Indifférent, written by Jean Cocteau. And Jean Cocteau actually drew this little illustration. Isn't that cute? And so here. This says a lot about a woman. She obviously helped name these um, chapters. Je ne regrette rien. My man, my men. <laughs> I am unfaithful. My rival, death. My hell, drugs. For better or for worse. Yes, I'm superstitious. Forgetting, drinking. Other people exist. The money that I've earned, singing to live. To have courage, a dream makes the choice for me. Jean connais, pas la fin. And of course, you could have read all of that yourself. So I'm going to start reading. Um, with the introduction by Margaret Crossland. And as you see, I've highlighted many things in this book um, <laughs> as notes to myself for um, keeping things in mind on this character because we hear her voice very clearly in this book. So let's get started. Here's an original photo, printed photograph that I got from a fan and his father was the owner of the Versailles in New York, where Piaf played a lot. And this is Mary Martin, and it's supposed to be Dorothy McGuire. And this is them at the Versailles, I believe, with Piaf. You won't see that in books anywhere, I don't think. You might have the only copy. And more he's going to join us for the first part of this audio. The name Piaf is the name of a voice, an individual singing voice that created and perpetuated an atmosphere of its own. In these random recollections, which Edith Piaf dictated to the journalist Jean Nolly during the last year of her life, we hear that voice again, this time her speaking voice, she does not tell her entire story. She remembers the highlights and goes far beyond the ghosted autobiography published in France in 1958. She tells of old, unhappy, far-off things, and many that were newer and happier. She tells of her good luck, her bad luck. She admits her many failings and attempts bravely to explain her self-induced sufferings. Sometimes she overcame them sometimes not. She selects and dramatizes incidents and relationships, and perhaps she invented or misconstrued some of them. No matter if she did, this is how she saw her own life and personality, her successes and failures, her friends, lovers, and husbands. There can be no objective truth about Edith Piaf. The truth remains subjective, to be found in the indestructible reality of her songs, Sometimes in these memoirs, she becomes confused and repetitive, but again, no matter. She could not escape her past, and sometimes it overwhelmed her, just as her story overwhelms us. Nostalgia, said Simone Signore, is not what it used to be, and if Piaf songs are now part of the past, reflecting the moods and music of France from the 1930s to the 1960s, their messages are never out of date. 
For Piaf sang about the things that cannot change, people who are in and out of love, or lovers who are separated, lovers who, who mourn, lovers who hope to find each other again. During her dramatic life, she was predictably drawn to songs with dramatic situations. Every lyric she chose or wrote was a miniature drama in itself. She says, it's the words that interest me, first of all, she once said, for in each song I try to make the people live. In these memoirs, first published soon after her death, she herself lives and talks. Her words complement her songs. Written by Margaret Crosslin. Chapter 1. Je ne regrette rien. By the time I die, so much will have been said about me that no one will any longer know what kind of person I was. Does that matter so much, you'll ask? No, not really, but the idea hurts me. That's why, while there's still time, I want to talk about myself at the risk of causing a scandal, at the risk, too, of incurring pity. I'm lying in a hospital bed. I'm dictating these memoirs, which crowd into my head. They attack me, surround me, submerge me. The past doesn't come close to me in any organized way. Faces, figures jostle against each other, saying, Me! Me first! There are moments of happiness, and then all the unhappy moments. There are more of them. But whatever happens to me in future, until the day when I have to render accounts in heaven, I know very well what I'll be saying. I'll repeat to myself over and over again the words of my song. Non, je ne regrette rien. This time I've won the battle against illness and death, but I won't always win it. And I want to draw up the balance sheet of my life. First, I'll have to describe my childhood and youth, but they seem so far away, sometimes so unreal. I feel that as I talk about myself, I'll be telling lies, although I won't want to. It's the more intimate secrets that weigh heavily upon me, the ones which have reached the public and distorted versions of the truth. I want to free myself from them once and for all by confessing them in the hope, obviously, that I'll be absolved from them. I want to explain, as far as one can ever explain one's own self, the woman I've been, all the women I've been. La mon piaf, piaf, Edith. I've lived a terrible life, it's true, but also a marvelous life, because in the first place, I loved life. And then because I've loved human beings, men, my lovers, my friends, but also the unknown men and women who made up my public, the people whom I've sung even to the furthest limits of my strength, the people for whom I'd like to die on stage at the end of one last song. All those passers-by who recognize my small figure, my way of walking in the street day and night, all that crowd who will follow me, I hope, on the last day, for I don't like being alone. I'm frightened of solitude, that terrible solitude which takes hold of you at dawn or dusk when you ask if there's any point in living and why are you living? This is a confession, and all that I say from now on will be perhaps my last confession. What I want is for someone, after they've heard everything, to say, as it was said from Mary Magdalene, her many sins are forgiven, for she loved much. <laughs>